Uh, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to uh, introduce again uh, Captain Diaz, and he's going to uh, bring up the zone deputy for uh, the uh, East Canyon country and, uh, we, uh, and answer a few questions about uh, how things are going. So uh, Captain Diaz, would you come up, please? All right, guys. Well, thank you for having us. My name is Captain Justin Diaz. Pleasure to be here, and thank you for having me. I would like to introduce uh, Deputy Karina Cervantes. She is the zone leader, one-stop shop for Canyon Country East. So as you guys know, Canyon Country is broken up into two zones, and we generally split east and west at Sierra Highway. However, uh, Deputy Cervantes or her partner, Deputy Stowers, can certainly help you, um, you know, no matter where you're at in Canyon Country. Um, on the back table, and I know the people on the video don't have access to the back table, of course, but on the back table, we've got um, all of our zone leaders. Uh, we've got their contact information, their cell phone numbers, their emails, all that good stuff. Um, so, Alan, maybe that's something you can post and send out to everybody. That would be great. That's something that we always want. And that's zone leaders for the entire Santa Cruz Valley, all of our, all eight of our zones. So uh, with that, I will turn the mic over to her in a couple minutes, but I just want to go over a few uh, crime stats and some stuff we talked about last month. Um, so, you know, always, 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 the first question is, how's crime in Santa Clarita, right? That's our bread and butter. That's what we're uh, in the business to do. So as you guys know, um, or you may remember from last time, we get our crime rate uh, based on how many crimes we have today versus this date last year. And that's how we get our crime rate. And uh, that's what we're judged on. So basically, we're taking today's crime on the 18th. It's today, August 18th. August 18th versus our crime on August 18th of 2020. So as of today, Santa Clarita Valley wide, we're up right around 80 crimes. Um, so the goal is by the end of the year and certainly throughout the year to tick that number down and um, uh, try and get those crimes below zero so we have a negative crime rate. So if you remember uh, from last time, 2020 was our lowest crime rate on record. We're very proud of that. But we know that we cheated a little bit because we were in lockdown for most of 2020, right? So if you think about it, Magic Mountain was closed. The mall was closed. Um, you know, a lot of our restaurants were closed. Our stores were closed. And uh, uh, crime was very low. So given the fact that we are 80 crimes over last year today isn't too bad. We certainly want to get that number down to zero or in the negative. But uh, being 80 crimes over, considering everything is fully open this year, uh, is not too bad. And I'm, I'm uh, not overly disappointed with that. Um, so when we talk about our crime rate, uh, we talk about part one crimes. And basically, the FBI keeps statistics for every uh, city, county, and the whole entire country. And that's how crimes reported. And those are called the FBI UCRs, Uniform Crime Reports. And basically, that is murder, rape, robbery, aggravated assaults, burglary, larceny, uh, grand theft auto and arson. So those are our big crimes. Those are part one crimes. And then a part two crime, which the FBI doesn't track, uh, is more of like your quality of life type crimes, uh, loitering, uh, you know, maybe vandalism, stuff like that. Stuff that's still important that we focus on, uh, but that we're not necessarily judged upon, at least through the FBI. So anyway, um, other than that, we want to certainly remind everybody that anybody watching can at any time for free, go on www.crimemapping.com and see exactly what's going on in your neighborhood. Very, very simple website to use. You don't need a password. You don't need um, to pay anything. You don't need to create a, an account. You just log on to it. You can put in your address. You can put in a zip code. You can put in an area, and it'll show you exactly what crime uh, goes, you know, is happening in your area. Super simple to use, very accurate. Uh, it actually mimics our internal crime mapping. A database and anybody can use it. So it's a great resource. So crimemapping.com. Um, other than that, uh, we are always, always, always reminding people about the 9 p.m. routine. So one of our biggest problems in Santa Clarita is theft. Actually, the majority of our crime is theft related. And um, you would be amazed at how many people don't lock their doors uh, at their houses, they don't shut their garages, or they don't lock their car doors. So if we could remember when you talk to friends and family, please, please, please lock your car doors. You can imagine if you're parked in a large parking lot and people are going around flipping door handles. If there's 200 cars in a parking lot and somebody goes around and flips all the door handles and maybe they get the first one that's unlocked, uh, they're going to rummage through it and steal your stuff. So uh, please remember to lock your car doors. Uh, if you're fortunate enough to have a garage at night, please park in the garage. If you're not fortunate enough to have a garage, maybe you can park in a well-lit area. Maybe you can park in your driveway. 
uh, but as long as the car's locked, that's our main thing. Also, uh, GTA, which is Grand Theft Auto, you'd be amazed at how many people's cars are stolen because their keys are left in the car. So, you, you know, whenever we talk about it, people always laugh and they go, no way, people don't, you know, why would you leave your keys in the car? You'd be shocked. So think about this. Most modern day cars, uh, you don't use your key anymore. You just use a key fob, right? So think about this. If you leave your key fob in your car and your car unlocked, somebody walks through the parking lots, they're flipping door handles, they say, oh, a car's unlocked. You get in the car, you don't even need to find the keys. All you do is push that start button, Alan, you got it. Push that button and you're off to the races. Boom, you got your nice ride, right? So um, anyway, something to think, of, uh, keep in mind. Uh, mental health, a huge, 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 huge issue uh, coast to coast in every community and we're no exception. Uh, mental health is a big problem as I think anybody in this room or anybody watching this video would tell you. I think that uh, it doesn't matter if you are a citizen, you're a business owner, you're a retiree, you're a police officer, you work at the hospital, you work for the city, the county, I think we all understand uh, the, the uh, mental health crisis. Uh, it seems as though, uh, if you talk to any police officer, anybody that works at the hospital, it seems as though uh, COVID has exacerbated our mental health crisis. Uh, again, in the back, and I know that uh, people watching the video don't have it, but Alan will post it. We have got all kinds of resources for uh, mental health uh, throughout this valley. Most of it is either free or low cost, no cost or low cost. Um, and that's through a variety of city entities, county entities, and then nonprofits out here. So if you know anybody who's having any issues with any type of mental illness, it could be anything on a scale of one to 10, uh, 10 being uh, you know, a 5150 a welfare and institution uh, you know, uh, committal on down to somebody who maybe has some mild anxiety or depression and anything in between. So we have those resources in the back for you. Uh, same thing with drug and alcohol. Drug and alcohol is a, a big thing. Uh, a lot of uh, mental health, a lot of people with mental health issues are self-medicating with drugs and alcohol. And uh, you know we want to get those people help too. So again, all those resources in the back. Alan, I know you'll post that for us. Um, and that's a big thing. So uh, what else, what else? Fire season. So as you guys know, we've been talking about fire season, you know, and the running, uh, the running uh, joke is, or the running thing is that, you know, there is no more fire season, it's year round. But, um, you know, uh, certainly right now would be our typical fire season or our proper fire season. Uh, what I wanna remind people is that the entire Santa Clarita Valley is surrounded by open space, right? And that's a wonderful thing, our hiking and biking trails and, you know, uh, where they won't build. And that's a wonderful thing, but where it gets scary is fire time, right? Fire season which we're in right now. Um, so, uh, you know, not only that, but we've got the wash, the Santa Clara River, which extends from the five to the 14 freeway. And uh, we typically will get brush ups there. So what I wanna remind people is if you see smoke, please, please, please don't think, oh, it's a small fire, or it might be a, just a big nothing, or somebody else is gonna call 911. Please call 911. Um, and so we can get resources out there. As you know, we will get resources out there fire department will, we can't put out the fire, but we can certainly help them uh, control the traffic so they can get uh, their equipment there to put out the fire. Um, fire is very, very, very scary anywhere, but especially in Santa Clarita. With so, um, you know, we have information that comes out on social media all the time. I mean, we all use social media and uh, there's information. Uh, a lot of it, uh, some of it might be accurate, a lot of it's inaccurate, a lot of it's misinformation. Please, please, please try and get your um, information from credible sources. So what would a credible source be? The signal certainly is a credible source, KHTS, City of Santa Clarita, County of Los Angeles, Sheriff's Department, uh, uh, Austin Dave comes to mind. Uh, that's certainly not an exhaustive list. Uh, there are others, but please keep those in mind. Uh, what else? Catalytic converters. I'll just touch upon a couple more things. Catalytic converters. Uh, certainly an issue, uh, as you guys know, catalytic converter theft's been very big, coast to coast in every single state, every single community. Santa Clarita is no exception. Uh, we've partnered with RNG Brakes, Canyon Country Muffler, and um, uh, uh, Reeves Automotive to do catalytic converter etching events. So if uh, you have the time, please take your car there to uh, be a part of one of those etching events. We're trying to get rid of as much catalytic converter theft as we can or eliminate, uh, and eliminate it altogether. But other than that, uh, I am going to turn the mic over to Deputy Cervantes. Again, she's your zone leader for Canyon Country East and, and really all of Canyon Country. And if anybody's got a question for Deputy Cervantes, go ahead. Sir. 
my name is Karina Cervantes. I'm the zone leader deputy for East Canyon Country. Uh, like Captain Diaz said, there's uh, I kind of go everywhere in Canyon Country. So east, west, feel free to call me, email me. Um, Alan will post the brochures that we have in the back, the pamphlets, and all my contact information is there: cell phone, phone number, you know, uh, email, and all that. So feel free to shoot me an email, leave me a voicemail. Um, and that's anything from, you know, crimes to quality of life or what have you. Uh, Captain D has bought, brought some uh, little pamphlets also for like, you know, those of you guys that are concerned, if you want to report a quality of life issue, that's like, you know, shopping cart, illegal dumping, code enforcement, all those good numbers are in the back. Um, if you can't get a hold of anyone or you've tried multiple times and you're not getting anywhere, feel free to call me and I'll help facilitate, you know, your issues. Um, anybody have any questions? So if by uh, some chance you're unable to reach uh, reach you or can you uh, uh, end up speaking to another uh, zone deputy, will they, will they be able to transfer the information or take action? Yeah, so if I'm on vacation or I'm not here out on training or, you know, whatever the case is, my partner, sister car, is Deputy Andrew Stowers. And he's West, I'm sorry, he's, uh, yeah, he's West Canyon Country. So feel free to call him, leave him a voicemail. Again, we both work hand in hand, he's right next to me. So for the most part, we ride in the same car every single day. We exchange information and, you know, handle everything that has to do with Canyon Country. But if you have an issue in Newhall and, you know, you're not getting a response from someone because that person may be on vacation, Feel free to call me, email me, and I will drive down to Newhall and you know fix the problem or at least look into it for you guys. Again, that goes with all Santa Clarita. Or I will forward the appropriate information to the appropriate um, zone deputy, zone leader deputy. So um, yeah, if I'm not here, feel free to reach out to my sister car, uh, Andrew Stowers. And again, that information is you'll post that it's all in the back. So um, quality of life issues, you know whatever whatever you have, I'll. I'll take, but if it's, if, if it's an emergency, please call 911. If it's like a non-emergent number where you see someone suspicious and you kind of just want to report it, then call the non-emergent Santa Clarita line and then call me and leave me a voicemail and tell me, hey, I have video footage of this guy, you know, he's walking in and out of houses or, or something like that and I'll look into it when I get back. So, uh, do you always ride on the west side of the car? <laughs> <laughs> I'll cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> Good, no other questions? No other questions. No other questions? You don't have any questions? I do. Okay. My, part of my question was a bit too etchy. Could you, could you describe what that was about? What did they do? Or the etching of the Catholic rivers? Yeah, great question. Yeah. So, um, and I'll back up really quick, and I think we touched upon it last month. So catalytic converters are very valuable right now. They use three metals, uh, rhodium, platinum, and palladium. Uh, when they're stolen off a car, it takes about one minute. They use a battery-powered sawzall. Two people do it. One person jacks up the car. The other person cuts out the catalytic converter with a battery-powered sawzall. They're recycled for about $800 each, and as you can as you can see, it's very profitable. So the problem is that if somebody steals your catalytic converter, and we catch them with a catalytic converter, we have no idea where that catalytic converter came from most of the time. So what we do with the etching events is uh, it's free, it's a free service. You can either go to uh, one of the three places I mentioned, RNG Brakes in Valencia, uh, Canyon Muffler in Canyon Country, or Reeves Automotive in Off of Soledad in Canyon Country. Basically what they're gonna do is they're gonna lift your car up on, a, on the uh, lift there, and they're gonna etch uh, with, a, with an etching tool your license plate number in there, and they're also gonna etch a sheriff's star in there, or paint a sheriff's star. So, in theory, if somebody steals your catalytic converter, and uh, we catch them maybe on a traffic stop, maybe a search warrant at their house, a probation or parole search where we find it at the house, now we've got the license plate etched into, um, uh, etched in the catalytic converter, and now we have a victim. Now we can call you up, say, hey, you know, uh, Mr. Smith, you know, uh, did you, was your catalytic converter stolen? And, and yes, now we have a victim. So catalytic converter is very, very, very expensive to replace, anywhere from $2,000 to $3,500. So, you know, you certainly don't want to wake up in the morning, start your car, and you hear this big, loud rumble, and then as, as soon as you do, you know that catalytic converter's been stolen. 
and it's really not it's really not even easy to get one. There are so many catalytic converters being stolen across the country, or and in Santa Cruz, of course, that there is a backup. People are going months without driving their cars because you call up the muffler shop, you call up the repair shop, you call up the dealership, and they can't even get the catalytic converters because they're all on back order because they're all being stolen all across the country. So I encourage everybody, please, please, please get those etched. It's a free service. Uh, many, many, many cities across the country are doing these etching services. And really it's just, it's in partnership with local businesses that have offered to do it. So great question, thank you. It could be a deterrent if they see the scar and they think, oh, I'm not gonna take it. And great point, so yeah, they get under your car, uh, they see the etching or they see the sheriff's scar. And, you know, in theory, if they know, they're going to say, hey, I, I don't want to steal this one. I'm going to go steal the one that's not etched or the one that's not painted. Great. Yeah, absolutely. Cassidy, yeah, who are the ones buying the catalytic converter? Uh, it's very interesting. So once a catalytic, a catalytic converter cannot legally um, be recycled. So uh, if you go and steal a catalytic converter, it can't, you can't take it to the scrapyard and sell it. It's illegal to do so. Our scrap yards out here are not doing it, but there are certainly some uh, throughout Los Angeles that are. So basically, they're going to pay someone uh, uh, upwards of $800 uh, for that, and then they are going to go take it to a smelter. The smelter will actually take the catalytic converter, they'll melt down the, uh, well, they'll melt it, separate the metals, and then sell those metals. Uh, and then in theory, those metals are, you know, sold to a manufacturing plant somewhere, and, you know, in theory to make uh, new catalytic converters. Who, you know, the life cycle of a catalytic converter. Make it, steal it, recycle it, melt it down, separate the metals, and make new catalytic converters. Is, is there uh, any particular uh, brand of vehicles that are more um, desired by the, uh, by the thieves than other? Great question. So, um, yes and no. So you would think that uh, thieves are generally going under maybe trucks and SUVs because they're easy to get under. And although that is the case, you would be amazed at how many Toyota Priuses um, uh, have this problem. So uh, there's a couple model Toyota Priuses that have two catalytic converters. And as you can imagine, if they're worth $800 each, you know, that's a $1,600 payday. Um, so yes, and I don't know the model offhand, but there is a certain, uh, if you have a Prius, uh, please be careful. Uh, most of them, or some of the models, have two catalytic converters. Um, but you know, then again, they've gone under buses. You know, like school buses. They've gone under like um, you know trucks. You know, Ford F one fifty is a common one. Toyota Tacoma. It's, it's pretty much any car. Does, does a catalytic converter lose value with age? No, because the metal always can be recycled out of it or, or melted down. So um, yeah, these uh, catalytic converters, you know. Many years ago, being made out of rhodium, platinum, and palladium, those were not precious metals at the time, and now they are. Um, I don't, I should know offhand, I don't, but a few months ago, rhodium was trading at $23,000 an ounce, or somewhere in there, versus gold at the time, that was about a thousand, don't hold me to those numbers, but uh, you, I mean, I just, when you compare it to gold, it's just unbelievable. And those catalytic converters, they've got those metals in there, and that's a big payday. Yeah, you might as well make the catalytic converters out of gold. It'd be worth less, right? <laughs> so great questions on catalytic converters. It's a phenomenon that if you would have asked a police officer or a repair shop or a muffler shop or a car dealership, if you would have asked them about this three years ago, they would have said, oh, you're crazy. That, you know, those never get stolen. Um, and now we've just made this shift. I mean, who would have thought in a million years? Any other questions? Great question. Thank you. Yes, sir. Just off, just off. What was the initial cost for a catalytic converter five, ten years before this craziness? Boy, yeah, that's a good question. Probably about a thousand, maybe. Maybe they, a thousand. They were, up, they were always up there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's never been a cheap thing to replace. You know. Never uh, had to have. Yeah, replace. but but now and and now it's a, an issue of supply and demand. Yeah. Exactly. You know, just getting it is next to impossible. Yeah. And getting the one made for your car, you know, like <laughs> let's say you have a Prius, getting the actual Toyota catalytic converter. Very difficult, if not impossible. You're probably going to end up with some sort of aftermarket you know, catalytic converter. Great questions, thank you. And that's really important. I hope everybody, uh, you know, everybody watching the video uh, takes that to heart and remembers that. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Well, thank you guys for having us. Uh, it's it's an honor to be here. Uh, we're happy that we can partner with you. 
Hopefully uh, many of our Canyon Country residents uh, see the video, take advantage of Deputy Cervantes and her partner Deputy Stowers. They're your one-stop shop for anything going on. Please don't hesitate to call them anything.